All right, YouTube, you're about to see how we create perfect, beautiful, natural edges every single time we do a countertop pour. Step number one, buy Ligari products. Step number two, watch the tutorials. Step number three, watch the tutorials. <laughs> All right, here we are, guys. The funnest part of the process is dumping out of the bucket. So before we pour this countertop, I wanna talk about uh, these kits. We've done hundreds of countertops using this process, right? Pouring it extra thick, taping off our edges or, or weather stripping to create that dam. And that's how we get these natural looking edges. So super cool process. Now, when we started uh, developing this process, um, a lot of times people do dirty pours and they just let it flow over. Well, we realized like, how do we, how do we keep that resin up there and keep that design? And we decided after testing a few options was taping those edges, letting that resin set up to where it becomes stiffer, doesn't want to move as much, and then we pull that tape. Now, in the beginning when we were doing these, we used to slick off the surface because we thought we needed to get rid of surface tension. Well, we did like three, three countertops like that and then we realized, man, we don't even need to do that. So now we just pour out right over the primer there's enough resin to level out and fill in. Um, it's funny because some companies are still teaching that process that we did in the very beginning, um, but you don't have to do that. So just keep that in mind. You can simply dump out, as long as you're doing eight ounces a square foot, um, uh, you can dump right out and it'll fill in and level out and you won't have to do a slicked off surface or put a thin coat of epoxy on your countertop first. So we got our black epoxy pigment and then we have our white epoxy. This is going to be a really cool counter, really popular colors, black and white, and we're going to get some really cool effects on this countertop using these two pigments. I'm going to be pouring out buckets randomly, and then I'm going to be blending it with a squeegee. One of our Ligari squeegees cut down. Now I'm going to pour the black in between all the white spots. Just like I said, we're going random here. I'm just going to make sure I'm getting color all throughout this countertop. Lots of ways to pour this stuff out, but you're about to see how easy it is to create amazing looking countertops by simply pouring out of a bucket and moving a little bit of a product around with a squeegee. All right, there it is. Now we can walk away, let it do its thing, and these things are gonna look amazing once we come back. Okay, so we've got our buckets dumped out randomly, and notice I don't have really big gaps. So now the next thing is I'm gonna blend these with a the squeegee, and the point of blending is I'm trying to fill in all these spots, okay? I don't wanna over blend these two colors because they'll just kind of muddy out, um, which sometimes looks really cool. But I'm gonna go through and just try to fill in all the spots and then go back and blend any areas that I wanna blend. So I'll push some, I'll pull some, just depends on where I need to move that resin. So again, guys, I'm just trying to subtly blend it. I don't want to over blend it. I want to keep some of that dominant white color. I want to get a little into the black, have some of that solid black spots also in this countertop. Just kind of skipping across the surface right now. Notice I'm not moving a bunch of resin. Just kind of skipping across the surface. You'll see when I spritz this with ice, so we're gonna get a lot of selling, a lot of cool effects where this, the colors are kind of thinned out. Won't get as much dispersing where the solid colors are at, but that's okay, we kind of want it randomly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add that dispersing effect.
We're gonna spritz the surface with this. We use 91% or higher. I'm looking for small to medium drops, right? We don't wanna mist it, we wanna spritz it. So we want those little droplets that's gonna create a lot of these cells out here. And you're gonna see right away, once I hit this surface, what it does to it. So super, super cool. And like I was telling you guys, all the spots where those pigments are thinned out, that's where we get all those cool craters and cells. And they look like they're inside, like in, in the countertop, not just on the surface. It's an awesome, awesome effect. So before we get to pulling these edges and showing you guys how to create those beautiful edges every single time, I wanna jump back to mixing. Now Kyle's gonna go over mixing, one of the most important parts of your projects because if you don't mix correctly, you're gonna have issues with your projects. So again, Kyle's gonna go over that. He might say some of the same stuff I said, but it's gonna be good to watch and learn. We have an amazing mixing process that ensures perfect mixing every single time. So we're ready to mix up our kit. When you guys order your kit, it's gonna come with the full tutorial, step-by-step, step, walking you through the entire process. We've already got our part A's dumped out here, and I just wanna show you guys the most important part, which is the 3P2 process. So we're gonna get our part B dumped in. And once we add this part B, guys, we need to be moving quickly, because the resin's gonna start heating up, gonna start uh, curing and we just wanna get it out of these buckets as fast as possible. So let's let this drain till we have a slow drip. Throw our cap on that and put it off this side. And this is it guys, this is our 3P2 process. If you guys follow this mixing process every single time, you will never have any issues with your resin setting up. So 3P2, the three stands for we're gonna mix the resin three times. We're gonna start at the top, go down to the bottom, go around our edge, back to the top, and around our edge one more time. That stands for one, we're gonna do that three times. So that was the three portion of our 3P2. Now the P portion is we pour into a secondary mixing container. And then we're gonna scrape the sides and the bottom of the bucket, getting as much of this resin out of this bucket as we possibly can. Now we're gonna mix the resin two more times. And that's it guys, it's that easy. You follow our 3P2 mixing process and you will never have any issues with your resin setting up while curing. All right, we're ready to pull the weather strip and get these edges coated. But before I do that, we're gonna talk about this exact kit. This is gonna be kit number eight on our website under the Exotics Countertop Kit. If you guys want a different kit, we also have those pre-made, but if there's one that you don't find that you like, you can always custom make your own kit by choosing the random colors that we have on there that are available to make your own custom kit. Okay, like I said in the beginning, guys, we're gonna show you how to create these natural, beautiful edges. It's that time. So what we do is we pull that weather stripping, we let some of that resin flow over just like it is, right? And then all we have to do is rub in the epoxy just like Kyle's doing. All he's doing is getting rid of any surface tension, any missed spots where the epoxy isn't over the primer yet. And what that allows it to do is flow over naturally and evenly, and it'll pull our design from the top 
down to the face, creating that beautiful natural edge that you see in real stone. All right, guys, this right here, this, what does that guy say? What would you, what would you look at that? We got, just look at it. what would you look at that? We got resin flowing like the salmon of Capistrana. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. No, I'm assuming it's a river and a lot of salmon go through it because Dumb and Dumber, he says on Dumb and Dumber, doesn't he? Salmon of Capistrana? Is it Capistrana? I have no idea. Capistrana. Trey, what are you doing behind me, dude? Did you guys hear that? You guys didn't hear that? Garbage truck outside. Yeah. Oh, that's what that was? Okay. I'm going to redo it. <clears throat> Thanks, homie. <laughs> All right. 